it's not dead. We're not dead. We're just taking a little break. It's only been like one year. Wow. If you haven't watched our previous videos, we are building a printer and wow, I look really young with shorter hair. First person to guess my age right now gets a 10% discount. Anyone who says 40, you will have to pay more on your next order. This is printer 0.00.1. Two decimal places to emphasize its early phase. Anyway, we're building a 3D printer step by step, slowly, methodically, with focus. This will be the John Wick of printer builds, only with more M3 bolts. So we have changed a few things. This is just our prototype. We need a test model before we make the following things. A mini printer, similar size to the one we have here. An average size printer, X1 sized. Then lunch. And finally, a large printer, K1 max size. And then budget and non-budget versions of these printers. This is going to be a big project. It's going to take a while, but you will see a higher frequency of videos on this project in future. When I started this project, I wanted to do an almost completely 3D printed frame. That's hard, man. Because imagine if you make a small mistake and you need to change it. And if you have to edit that and reiterate it with a high infill part, that takes forever to do. Even with low infill parts, you have to wait. Also, around the same time, Rolahan came out with his Rook Mark I printer, which is similar size, but it has this cool design where the frame is made out of steel rods, and it uses that with LM bearings for the Z-axis. Super simple design, but genius. I'm linking his channel down below, check it out, but we literally just got the Rook kit in the shop, which is also linked down below. Also check out Dreams Void, he's on our Discord server and he's designing a print-a-block printer, which is crazy cool and probably a way better idea than a monolithic frame. The link is down in the description, as is our Discord server. Join. So I didn't really want to continue designing a 3D printed frame printer, seeing as these designs are being worked on. So for the moment, we're just sticking with good old fashioned aluminium profiles. Anyway, I digress. The goal is still the same. I want a printer that I can assemble and disassemble really easily because we get a lot of upgrades in the shop, main boards, hot ends, extruders and such. And I want a printer that I can mod really easily so I can test these. These days, manufacturers are designing printers that are less easy to mod. It's becoming the standard in 3D printing. I don't like this. Remember when things were easier, when every printer had an aluminum extrusion frame, when 2.85 millimeter filament was still popular, when you printed under 100 millimeters per second, when you used an end stop for Z-homing, when you had to turn off standby mode on your PC when you wanted to connect via USB. So the ultimate goal is building a printer that you can assemble in three hours. How long does a V0 take to assemble? CNC Kitchen says 30 hours. 30 hours, three hours. Maybe we're being a bit overconfident. Let's dream big. Okay, let's talk about this guy because since the last videos, we've, we've made a few changes. So if you remember in previous videos, I wanted to make a printer with a 100 by 100 millimeter build plate. That was too small. Um, I just didn't like the idea of, of having that little space for even a mini printer. So I considered other build plates and the V0 build plate came to mind, but that is still only 120 by 120. And maybe it's a bit too small. So I settled on this. This is an Ender 2 Pro build plate and it is 165 by 165. And I think that's the perfect size for a mini printer. However, the Ender 2 Pro is a relatively old printer. And while it is still available from Creality, I don't see it lasting that long. So we might not be able to find that easily in future. It might be difficult to source. So now we come to a crossroads. I could use the V0 120 by 120 millimeter, but I have other options. I could also use a Bamboo Lab A1 mini bed because we have these in the shop now. That's, that's a possibility. So I am opening this question to you guys. Which is the best size build plate for a mini printer? Let me know, and whichever one is most popular, I will use for this project. Okay, bed out of the way. What's next?
The first thing you will probably notice about this printer is the gantry. There is just a rail there. Normally, it's common to use an aluminum profile, a 2020 or a 1515 is commonly used on Voron printers. I decided to just use the rail. This is a small printer. It's not going to be super high speed. I think we can get away with that. But this is still in experimental phase. So let's just see. So what may happen without a profile is something called skew. And this is basically when the gantry is not parallel to the back frame. And this can also happen with belt tensioning on Core XY machines really easily, because when you tension one belt, uh, the other side will kind of slant a bit. So it's really important to have your belt tensioning to the same degree. Otherwise, your prints will be a bit slanted. Tolerance will not be good. There'll be messy prints. Don't do that. If the rail doesn't give us the best quality, then we can always put in an aluminum extrusion like a 1515, but we could also use a carbon fiber tube. Now, these are great because they're super lightweight, but they're also very, very rigid and they work well with these MGN9 rails that we're using. For motion, we are using two MGN12 rails on the side and for the gantry, we are using an MGN9 rail. Now I chose an MGN9 because it's balance between rigidity and lightweight. Uh, an MGN7 might be not quite as rigid, especially without using a profile. And an MGN12 is just a little bit too heavy for a gantry, I think. So printed parts. We are using 3 d Jake ASA for this, and I'm using ASA because it's quite similar to ABS. It has similar properties. Strength is quite similar. Uh, temperature resistance is quite similar, but it's just a lot easier to print because you don't necessarily need an enclosure with this. So I would highly recommend using ASA for printed parts here. Don't use PLA. So bearings. In previous videos, we were using real idlers and pulleys for motion. This time we're only using pulleys for the motors. And wherever we were using real idlers, we are now using these flanged bearings. These are quite similar to the ones used by the Voron V0 series. And we will also need to use 0.5 millimeter shims between these and the printed parts so there is no erosion of the ASA parts and there is good fluid motion when the belts are turning around these bearings. For the Z-axis, we are using LM8UU bearings on these eight millimeter steel rods. Now, these are great. These are very inexpensive and totally okay for use on a bed and printer this size. I want to try and avoid using rails for the Z-axis. It's not like we need high acceleration on the Z-axis anyway. So that's why I'm using the LM8UU bearings. For the XY motors, we are using standard NEMA 17s that are geared for a 24 volt system. However, these could be upgraded to bring in stronger motors like a 48 volt setup. We have moved up from those little tiny corner joints you saw us using in previous videos, and we're now using these triangular corner plates. These are much better, they're bigger, they have more rigidity. The printer frame is a lot stronger because of these. It's a bit more in budget, but it makes up for it. Most Core XY printers integrate their belt tensioning systems into the A and B motor mounts. Now this does save space, but it adds more complexity to it. And because I want a quick assemble disassemble process, I am going to put the tensioning system here at the back in the rear belt route. This also adds an extra anchor point to the belts, reducing some backlash. In terms of electronics, I am currently using an Octopus Pro board with 2209 stepper drivers. And right now I am actually just testing this with Marlin. However, in future, I do want to use Clipper. Clipper is much easier to mod. And seeing as this printer is designed to be modded, it makes sense to use that. So in future, we will be hosting Clipper on this BTT Pi. We have these in the shop at around 45 euro right now. We also have the BTT Pi 2, which is around 75 euro. Uh, this is a bit more powerful. It's quite similar to the uh, Pi 4B. However, I don't think we need that extra oomph for this printer. So the display, and I haven't made up my mind with this one. Um, right now for testing, I am actually just using a 12864 LCD. This is the same as those on an Ender 3, the original version. Uh, I'm not sure I want to use this in future, but if I was to have a nice screen, I would get a Clipper compatible screen. But for the budget option, that might be just a bit too much. 
Yes, we'll have lots of info on a clipper screen, but we'll also have that info on mainsail. And the printers that I use on a daily basis, I barely interact with their display, like almost nothing. The most that I do is with the K1 and K1 Max because I'm using Orca Slicer with those. And all I need to do is import the G-code wirelessly and then go over to the printer and select the file. And that's it. I never have to interact with those screens unless I am tuning something, which almost never happens. So I'm a bit hesitant about getting a nice clipper screen, especially for the budget versions, because they can be a bit pricey. So I'm honestly not sure about investing in a screen. But if you guys have opinions on this, then let me know. I'd like a second opinion on this. So where is the payoff in this? What is different about this printer? Well, as mentioned before, the quick assembly and disassembly process for sure. But I also want this printer to have decent speed. High speed is not my primary goal here. I would be very happy with a top speed of 300 millimeters per second and an acceleration of only 10K. If I can have that at good quality, I'm very satisfied. So let's talk about budget because that matters for a lot of people. Let's go through it. 11 aluminum profiles, 12 corner angle plates, assorted screws, 100 M3 threaded inserts, 50 T-nuts, two 8 millimeter steel rods, three NEMA 17s, one kilogram of ASA, an Octopus Pro, an LCD 12864, four TMC 2209s, assorted cables, two LM8 UU bearings, two MGN12 rails, and one MGN9 rail. So right now that is pushing 450 euro. And that is without the bed, uh, the hot end, the extruder, and there are certainly going to be extras. I really don't want this to go over 700 euro, at least for the prototype. I'm gonna be using a clicky probe for the leveling to reduce on costs. But yeah, I don't want this to go over 700 euro, so make it similarly priced to a V0, but with the same capability, although having the quick assembly disassembly process. That's the goal. And after that, we need to consider constraining the budget. And that will be the hard part. We have options for this though. I have been using these SG15 bearings as a replacement for the rails because the rails can be expensive. And these are very inexpensive and they can be mounted on a six millimeter steel rod, which can be embedded on a lightweight profile like a 5015. I am not using these for the prototype, however. I am using the rails. Rails are compact and easy to integrate with printed parts. These are quite similar to LM bearings uh, in the sense that they're not as compact as rails. If we are using the Pi, then the Octopus Pro board is not entirely essential. We could switch to a BTT Pico, just like the V0 does. The prices I quoted for these aluminum profiles are actually relatively high because these are cut to size. You can get like bigger ones and then cut them. And that actually does take a bit off the price. Also, I had planned for this printer to have a Revo micro hot end. These are great hot ends because you can get really quick nozzle swaps. However, it might be outside the scope for this printer, seeing as this is designed to swap the whole hot end easily, not just the nozzle. So I might change to a cheaper and yet higher flow hot end for the first version. Also with the extruder, I wanted to use an Orbiter extruder. These are great because they are so, so compact with these NEMA 14 motors. But again, we could change it. This is by far the biggest project we have ever undertaken, but there will be frequent updates about this in the future. And I would like to reassure everyone that this is not a commercial project. We're not selling this printer, nor we are selling the design, uh, but everything will be released for free under Creative Commons licensing. But the main goal of this project besides having a printer, obviously, is to get information out there on how to do this yourself. Not necessarily the same design, but I want information on how someone can do this from scratch, from the little, little tiny things to the big things. I want a resource to be out there for this because there's only basically scattered information online on how to do this. It's not entirely geared for beginners as well. So this is the goal. By the end of this, I want to have basically a library on the do's and do not do's of building a printer. So from today, there will be an extra channel in the Discord server. And I would invite anyone who has any questions about this printer build or printer builds in general to come by, 
hop in there and ask a question. And also, if you want to give input on this project, then we would also love that. I really, really don't want this project to be entirely one way. So with a bit of luck, we will have an XY motion test pretty soon. And in the next video, we will have the bed put in. Please suggest a bed and also the leveling system. If you have questions or comments about this build or printer builds in general, you can let us know in the comments down below. You can also join our Discord server where the new channel is so we can talk about this. The links for that and all of the products that we've mentioned are down below as usual. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.